there are very few brands in sim racing that focus solely on the high-end market. Cube Controls is an Italian brand synonymous with some of the finest steering wheels in sim racing. They set the bar with their Formula CSX2, but with a complicated few years of chip shortages, their screen manufacturer being bought up and a global pandemic, they've had to pull out all the stops to try and make it back to the top. For the past few weeks, I've been using the brand new Cube Controls CSX3, and today I'm delighted to share my thoughts with you. I'm Lawrence, welcome to the channel. Introduction. On the left you'll see all the sections in this video. I've put timestamped links to each section in the description below. While you're down there please hit the thumbs up button to help YouTube suggest this video to others like you. 70% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. Please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified about upcoming reviews. The past few years have been tough for Cube Controls and their top end wheels. Almost immediately after the release of the GTX, stock seemed to dry up and Cube Controls didn't really have an answer. This is partly due to supply chain issues of course, but I would also imagine that it's due to Asetech Simsport's purchase of Ultimate Game Tech, who provided the screens for CSX2 and the GTX. So much so that Cube Controls had to remove those products from their website. Of course, I'm just speculating here and this is not information that I've gotten from Cube Controls, Asetech or any other source. This is simply me putting two and two together and I may be completely wrong. Anyways, that's an aside and no longer an issue because the CSX3 is here now and it's feature rich. It allows for over 50 inputs and it's touchscreen and it's powered by SimHub. First impressions. Firstly, I must say that I preferred the look of the screen on the CSX2. The bevel and recess of this screen instantly struck me as a potential issue and I'll cover that in a little more detail later. Installing a quick release was as simple as could be and oh my days this magnetic USB cable is an absolutely incredible addition. I was never a fan of the plastic connectors on the previous generation of wheels and Cube Controls have knocked it out of the park with this cable, it's just so good. The buttons are clear and uniform and allow for custom backlight colours and overall brightness. The shifters and clutch paddles seem to be lifted straight from the GTX and F-Pro and are superior to those of the CSX2. Instantly I noticed that one of my favourite features was either missing or not obvious. That was the clutch bite point adjustment knob which really couldn't make adjusting your bite point any easier. You can still adjust the bite point, it's just a little different now which I'll cover in a later section. The grips are not as grippy as the CSX2 although they have an identical shape. They're made of hard wearing rubber but do offer a slight sponge albeit minimal. This makes them slightly more difficult to grip but once I got used to it I didn't have any grip issues whatsoever because the shape of the grips is amongst the best I've ever used on any sim racing product. Of course this is quite subjective but the depth of the grips really allows me to wrap my full hand around it and get that extra torque through my arms when I need it the most. Price Nobody's watching this video expecting to get a budget price tag and I think that Cube Controls and their reputation allows them to charge a premium at this stage. The people who want this product will pay what it costs, similar to a high-end watch or those wheels they want on their brand new car. The entry level CSX3 comes in at €1,270 plus VAT. That equates to around €1,500 once it's in your hand, which is very similar to the pricing of the previous model. I don't have the exact options list at this point but I'm guessing that the upgrades will include additional colours for the aluminium parts on the rear of the unit. I got the blue accents which are beautiful but I never see them while using the wheel. I guess it's nice to know that they're there. Upgrade options will also likely extend to extra paddles which I have on my GTX and I really quite like. I use them for my pit limiter and of course for flashing my lights at people with inferior steering wheels. Installation Hardware there's little or no installation here. I didn't even have to install the stickers as they were beautifully applied from the factory. I'm not sure if this will be the case for everyone though. The flange at the rear is super strong and you get the bolts needed to install most quick releases like this genuine NRG carbon quick release which really matches the carbon fibre accents. I use three bolts to secure a quick release on most wheels. You will also need to use a USB 3 extension cable or powered hub to make the most of this wheel unless you can reach your PC with the supplied cable. Incompatible or incapable hardware may lead to power issues which can affect your screen or wheel functionality. 
There's a power button on the rear of the unit too, which is quite hidden, but that's not a bad thing as you wouldn't want to hit it accidentally mid-race. Installation Software As mentioned, Cube Controls has ditched the clunky UGT software in favour of a crowd favourite, SimHub. For those of you unfamiliar with SimHub, it's an incredible piece of lightweight software which interfaces with your sim of choice to use game telemetry to provide added value to external products and software. For example, you can control LEDs, rumble motors, base shakers and even run your race telemetry on wireless devices or additional monitors. It has a bucket load of screen layouts, each of which you can fully customise and when I say fully customise, I don't mean you can change the colours and layout. I mean, you can write the code to influence the behaviour. The one thing SimHub is missing is a proper marketplace for dashboards, overlays and other settings. It can be difficult to find the exact dash that you're looking for, but it's out there. To switch dashes, you can map a button in the SimHub software. If you want to change pages on your dashboard, you can swipe left or right on the touchscreen or again, you can just map a button. Cube Controls has developed a plugin for SimHub which recognizes your CSX3 and allows you to customize your button colors. However, calibration of your shifter and clutch paddles, as well as setting up your clutch bite point, is done through a different piece of software from Cube Controls. Luckily, though, you don't need to have this Cube Controls software running while using the wheel, as it's just for configuration to save settings to the wheel itself, it seems. I used many beta versions of the software and did encounter some issues. I expect this process to be smooth and painless by the time this product releases. Screen The party piece of this wheel is the fact that it has a screen. It's beautiful and it's surrounded by 17 extremely useful LEDs. The LEDs can be customised to incorporate ABS warnings, flags or even car position spotting capabilities. As mentioned, I preferred the sleek integration of the screen on the CSX2 and GTX. The raised plastic surround looks a little out of place, but the LEDs are certainly much better than the ones on previous generations. The screen itself is somewhat recessed, which did pose some minor issues for me. Firstly, when using the touchscreen functionality, which is amazing for changing pages on your dash, the screen is always a little bit further away than you expect. Secondly, and perhaps a little more problematic, is that the recessed screen and proud bevels which house the LEDs make for a poor combo if you drive in a GT seating position like I do. What ends up happening is that the very top of your screen is slightly out of your line of sight because it's blocked by the bezel. I found this very annoying but my GT seating position is slightly higher than most due to my seat mover and adjustable rails so this may not be an issue for everyone. The screen is a 4 inch 800 by 480 screen which I think is just a bit too small. At least, it just feels a bit too small. Some will quibble about the resolution, but the resolution isn't a problem for me in practicality. The bezel and recess of this screen just doesn't do it for me. If it just sat flush with the beautiful carbon faceplate like the CSX2 or GTX did, I would be ecstatic. The recess is not uncommon, as you would also encounter it on the GSI Pro Elite, but they've done their edges at an angle which opens up that small screen just a little bit better. Don't get me wrong, the screen is a beautiful addition and really separates devices like this from a visual point of view. In practical terms, using a screen on the centre of the steering wheel is best suited for low GT or formula seating positions where you look past your steering wheel rather than looking over it. That said, I love being able to customise this screen exactly to my liking while turning off all the in-game HUD apps to add to my immersion. I only need to look at my screen on the straights and having all the info I need on this beautiful product makes me feel like a king. The top end Cube Controls wheel owners have been screaming out for SimHub compatibility and they'll be very glad that it's finally here. This really is a feel good product. Buttons, switches and rotaries. A lot of products make the claim that they've lots of functionality but this 282mm steering wheel has 12 backlit buttons, dual 7 way hats, Four traditional rotary encoders, two thumb rotaries, two scroll wheel rotaries built into the grips, two backlit toggle switches, carbon fibre adjustable shifter and dual clutch paddles, magnetic quick connect USB cable, 17 button LEDs and 17 individually customizable RGB LEDs around the 4 inch 800x480 Vocor touchscreen LCD screen. That's 49 inputs by my count and if you add the two clutch paddles, it would bring you up over 50. That is simply incredible. The buttons are very effective and very similar to those of the CSX2 and the GTX. 
The buttons can be backlit and customized for individual colors and overall brightness. This means that when the wheel is powered off, you get a beautifully subtle and uniform look without too much color. You can turn individual RGB LEDs off by setting the color to black, which is a nice workaround for those who don't want too much color on their steering wheel. Please note that these buttons cannot display the color white. Instead, you end up with a shade of pink, which isn't to everyone's taste. I would be very surprised if this isn't just a software bug though, as I've never seen an RGB LED incapable of displaying a color especially white. One thing that bothered me with the previous steering wheels was the quality of those stickers. Maybe not so much the quality of the stickers, but with lots of use they tended to come loose or travel on the button. What they've actually done here with the CSX3 to prevent that is to make the space between the raised surround on each button smaller, which means that you need to press down on the middle of the button rather than allowing you to press on the side, which not only caused stickers to move, but could also cause the buttons to crack over time. This is a very welcome addition and despite trying my best to make these stickers move, I haven't been successful yet. They've ditched the two 8 position rotary switches of the CSX2 in favour of two rotary encoders which surround the hand painted Cube Controls logo. Rotary switches allow you to specify each detent of the rotary wheel as its own unique input. Although that was a cool feature of the CSX2, I never used it and didn't ever see the need for it. However, hardcore F1 fans or people who want their engine map presets to hand might be disappointed. The four rotary encoders only register two inputs each. Turning it clockwise triggers one input, anti-clockwise triggers the other. The four main front facing rotaries on this device do not have a click down function, just like the previous models. As expected, rotary detents are extremely good. However, the spacing in the grooves of the thumb rotaries and scroll wheels is a little large for me and it doesn't allow for a consistent scrolling experience with each use. This is something that you can get used to but I preferred the shape of the thumb and scroll wheels on the CSX2. The main bias and ABS thumb rotaries are only really adjustable from the front. Usually for thumb rotaries I like to use my index finger at the back to make precise movements but there's not enough at the back of these thumb rotaries exposed to do that comfortably. The seven way hats do have those nice teeth on them though and they're delightful. I'm so happy that they put two of them on here and they're in the perfect position. I wouldn't change a thing about them. Lastly, the two toggle switches are excellent for things like lights, wipers, ignition, pit limiter, etc. They're backlit in green, which I'm not too keen on, and they're not customizable in the software. Shifters and clutch paddles. These are a huge upgrade from the CSX2. Of course, they're magnetic shifters with hall sensors. They're very similar to the GTX and F-Pro paddles and carry great weight and resistance for incredibly tactile shifts. In fact, comparing them side by side, the CSX3 paddles are even better than the GTX due to a slightly longer mechanism which introduces less rotation during the shift. They're made from billet aluminium and carbon fibre and just ooze that premium feel. Adjustments are easy, although during my first use the upshift paddle kept coming closer to the wheel grip as the screws which hold it in place were not fully secured from the factory. If you're heavy handed in your shifts, do tighten these bolts as you really don't want the shifter to travel during a race. There's a lot of adjustment available in the angle and spacing of the shifters which is excellent. You can change the angle and width of the paddles. I can't see anyone needing any more adjustments than you have here. Grips. I was a huge fan of the CSX2 grips and I'm happy to confirm that these grips are almost identical. The material is a little harder than my CSX2 had, but is very similar to the F-Pro steering wheel. What I like about them is that they have a great depth which makes it feel more like you're holding a weapon than a steering wheel. There's a hard plastic patch where your index finger wraps around and you don't feel this at all when you're wearing gloves. Even without gloves, you barely feel this patch when driving and your hands stay pretty planted even though there are no grooves in the grips for your fingers to sit into. This allows for lots of different types of grip. Your thumbs have loads of space to move and it's very easy to find that ideal driving position, yet you still have every button within easy reach. There's a thumb recess at the top of the grips which works really well. I'm very happy with the grips, although I did like the slightly spongier nature of the grips on my CSX2. Final thought. That's a lot to digest and yes, I've been meticulous to point out any negatives or potential negatives that I've found with this product. 
This is a 1500 euro product and if people are going to spend their hard earned cash on it, you deserve to know all of those things. At the same time though, there are very few products out there which come close to the experience of a hand built Italian Cube Controls steering wheel. There's an air of quality about this product and I hope that this time they can control the stock levels sufficiently. You see, I think that their previous low availability periods with the CSX2 and GTX have really hurt Cube Controls as a company. I fear that they've lost loyalty to worthy competitors like Gomez Sim Industries, VPG or even newer steering wheels like the Simagic FX Pro or Moza FSR. You can't change colours on the toggle switches but all the other LEDs are fully customizable and can even be individually turned off. There's an overall brightness slider which controls all the button's brightness but you can also adjust individual button brightness by simply choosing a lighter or darker shade of a colour. The screen is great quality but it's a little small at 4 inches. The resolution is fine for me but the 800 by 480 resolution isn't that impressive by modern standards. To the best of my knowledge, even the larger Vocore screens have the same resolution, so a larger screen might have the negative effect of highlighting the relatively poor resolution. The on-off button is nice, although SimHub allows you to automatically power down the device when you close SimHub, so I found myself not actually using that on-off button despite thinking it would be quite useful. The incredible shifters, beautifully weighted clutch paddles and oodles of backlighting are a very welcome addition. But I have to concede that I just still prefer the look of the screen on the CSX2 and GTX. It used to be flush and looked like a core part of the steering wheel. On this, it looks a little bit like an add-on. Almost like one of those aftermarket long life batteries that bulges out from a beautifully designed product. The new QCon connector is amazing and the extra 7-way hat is glorious. However, the clutch bite point can no longer be adjusted on the fly using the hardware which was one of my favourite features of the CSX2 and GTX and one which I often cited as an amazing unique selling point. I understand that SimHub probably doesn't support that functionality whereas UGT software did, I'm just a little torn about this. All things considered, I think it's a nice improvement over the CSX2 but also comes with some minor negatives. This wheel feels very similar and if you're an existing CSX2 owner, unless you have any major issues with it, there's no real need to upgrade. For those who are looking for their first and possibly last top end sim racing steering wheel, you might be looking at it. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday, let me know what you're thinking right now in the comments below. For now, I'm Lawrence and I'll chat to you later.